Hello lovelies. As you know, all month long, I am sharing easy weeknight dinner ideas to help weeknights in your household run a little more smoothly. And today I have three awesome chicken dinner ideas that I know you're going to love, including this garlic brown sugar chicken that has quickly become Greg's new favorite dish. So I think you guys will love it as well. Keep in mind, all three of these tasty recipes today are being featured on our meal planning site, healthymealplans.com. Now, if you're not familiar with the site yet, guys, it is awesome. You can browse recipes, plan out your meals for the week, and then generate your shopping list. We've also teamed up with an amazing dietitian who has created some custom meal plans that can be purchased through the site and are perfect for different dietary restrictions. So there's a low carb meal plan, a vegan meal plan, a gluten-free meal plan, and the list goes on. Now I'm gonna kick things off today with one of my absolute go-to chicken recipes. It's my maple Dijon chicken, and it all starts with a great marinade. So I am starting with a little bit of oil in my bowl. I'm using a nice flavorless oil here. You could use canola, vegetable, sunflower, or even avocado oil. To that, I'm going to add some maple syrup. Being the Canadian that I am, maple syrup is available in abundance where I live. I've got some grainy Dijon mustard headed in here a whole heaping helping of garlic, because we love garlic in this kitchen, and some fresh thyme leaves. Fresh thyme is really, really critical in this recipe. It adds this really beautiful, earthy, savory flavor to all the nice sweetness of that maple syrup. I'm also going to hit this with a little salt and a little pepper, and then I'll just give it a good whisk and get it on top of my chicken. Today, for all three of these recipes, I am using chicken thighs with the skin on and the bone in. The reason I love these so much is because they have a ton of amazing flavor and they're really, really affordable compared to say boneless, skinless chicken breast. That being said, any of these recipes will really work with any kind of chicken you like, so feel free to decide what you wanna use in your household. I'm gonna get as much of this marinade over everything as I possibly can, and then I'll just use my tongs to sort of shake everything around. I used to do this in zipper bags, but I'm trying to be a little more environmentally sound, so doing this in a glass container like this is a great way. I like to just pop a lid on this and get it into my refrigerator for at least 30 minutes or a few hours if you have them. I'm gonna be baking this up on a parchment-lined baking sheet at 375. Now you probably know this already, but just in case you don't, it is really, really important once we're done with our marinade to discard it, because obviously it's touched the raw chicken. Now I will say, in a recipe like this where you're using something really sugary like maple syrup, you'll wanna make sure to use some parchment or aluminum foil to line your pan, just because it can tend to burn around the edges and you don't wanna spend your evening doing dishes. That would defeat the entire purpose of easy weeknight dinners, am I right? At this point, I always like to hit it with a little more salt and pepper, and then we will get it into the oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for between 30 and 40 minutes or until that chicken registers 165 degrees on a meat thermometer. When these come out of the oven, they smell absolutely incredible. You've got that gorgeous garlic and of course that maple syrup. Your kitchen will smell good enough to eat. And what perfect timing because dinner is served. Next, for you spice lovers out there, I have got some chili garlic chicken that is oh so yummy. It starts once again with a really wonderful marinade. I've got some oil in my bowl. To that, I'm going to add a little soy sauce for a nice savory flavor. And of course, the most important ingredient, our chili garlic sauce. You can usually find this in the international aisle at your supermarket. I am slightly obsessed with it, so I basically use it in everything now. I'll add some honey to this for a touch of sweetness, some ginger that's been grated, and then once all that yumminess is in the bowl, we're gonna add something a little different, just a bit of freshness with some lime zest and juice. This adds just a bit of tartness to this marinade. We'll give that all a stir, and then once again, I'm just going to pour it over my chicken thighs and get them into the refrigerator for at least 30 minutes. Like I said, the longer your chicken marinates, the more delicious it's going to become. So if you've got the time, use the time. Once that chicken has soaked up all that marinade, I'm going to arrange these on my parchment-lined baking sheet. And then I like still hitting these up with just a little bit of salt and pepper. Once again, I'll just spoon a little more of this marinade on top to make sure we try to maximize the flavor while we can. And then of course we'll discard our marinade just like we did with our last one. We will get it into the oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit until it's cooked through. Spicy, salty, sweet, what is not to love? 
Finally guys, as promised, I am sharing Greg's new favorite chicken. It's this amazing garlic brown sugar chicken. And I wish I could take credit for it. It's actually inspired by an awesome food blogger named Damn Delicious. I will link the original recipe in the description box because this is one of those recipes you honestly have to taste to believe. I love starting by seasoning up my chicken liberally. You wanna hit it with some salt and some pepper, as you always do. Then I've got a nice big oven safe skillet heating up on the stove. It's important to use an oven safe skillet here because we're gonna start our chicken on the stove and then pop it into the oven to finish cooking. In my skillet, I am going to melt some butter. Now, if you wanted to use oil here, you could, but I am a great believer in butter. Butter makes things better. So we're gonna melt down our butter and then we are just going to place our chicken thighs skin side down into our skillet. You'll wanna let them cook up for between three and four minutes or until they become nice and golden brown on one side. Then we'll just flip our chicken and let it cook for another two to three minutes before removing it from the pan. Now, it's important to note these are not fully cooked yet, so we are gonna get them back into the oven, but we're just gonna give them a quick little breather while we fire out a touch more butter. You can decide if you need more butter or not. I'm also going to add some garlic to the pan, and as soon as that becomes fragrant, I'll go ahead and add some brown sugar to the pan. So this is like a perfect sweet and savory recipe. So much to love. To amp up that flavor factor even more, I've got some dried basil, some dried thyme, and some dried oregano headed in here. And then I'm just going to stir this around until the brown sugar has completely dissolved. Once that's happened, you can get your chicken back into the pan. You'll wanna flip it once or twice to coat it in that mixture. We will get it into the oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for about 15 minutes or so, or until it reaches a safe internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit on a meat thermometer. Oh my gosh, guys. I wish you could seriously smell this. I'm pretty sure this is going to be your new favorite chicken recipe. Don't believe me, you need to try it for yourself. If you do, as always, be sure to tweet me, Instagram me, or Facebook me a photo, because I love seeing your kitchen creations. All of these yummy recipes are linked in the description box below, you can find them there. And finally, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell, because there is lots more deliciousness where this came from.